Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Doc is In podcast series in Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi. I am glad to introduce my team. My name is Dr. Pier Giorgio Neri. I'm the director of the OEID service here in Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi, and I have the pleasure to introduce my team. Dr. Francesco Picchio, on my right side, if you kindly uh, introduce yourself, please. Thank you, Pier Giorgio. Um, I'm Francesco Picchi. I'm a retinal UVIT specialist working here in Cleveland Clinic, Abu Dhabi. I came from uh, Koala Institute in Cleveland, and I've been working here for seven years now. And here at my left side, uh, I have Dr. Aniruda Agarwal. And please introduce yourself, Aniruda. Hi, thank you. My name is Aniruda Agarwal. Um, I am a vitro retina surgeon and UVIT specialist with training in U.S. and India. I've been here for more than three years now. I'm glad to tell you a little bit more about me. So, as I said, my name is Pier Giorgio Neri. I was trained in Scotland, UK, and I'm an ocular immunologist, and I have the pleasure to coordinate this team. So since I think that uveitis that is a hot topic for us, and very important even in the GCC countries, will be dissected in this podcast. So let's start to put some meat on the grill. So Francesco, what is uveitis? Can you tell us in simple words what that is? Yes, so uh, uveitis is uh, an uh, autoimmune disease of the eye, basically. Uh, the way I tell it my, to my patient is the immune system that's usually protecting them from viruses and bacteria is attacking a part of their body. In that case, the inner layer of the eye, so the uvea. And that's something we need to treat, we need to control. This is uveitis. Now, uveitis, uh, as we all know, can be related to uh, systemic diseases of the body because the immune system is attacking other parts of the body or can be just isolated to the eye. Well, that's a very good start because we understand what non-infectious uveitis is and we call this because we don't know exactly which kind of part of the immune system is attacking the eye. And the eye is a little temple. And this little temple can be violated also by infectious agents. So, Aniruda, let's address what an infectious uveitis is. Infectious uveitis is an ocular inflammation. That is inflammation of the coats of the eye that can happen because of number of agents. Bacteria, viruses, fungi, certain parasites can also invade and they can attack uh, the inner surfaces of the eye and cause uveitis or ocular inflammation. So let's say that infections are somehow enemies that can attack the eye directly. Is it always the case that we have a systemic involvement for the infection or in some cases uh, explain to our, to our people how you know, this cannot be the case? So that's a great question. Uh, infections can involve different organs of the body and sometimes we have situations where you have an infection very remotely somewhere in the gut, for example, and it's affecting your eye. Uh, sometimes you also have situations where the infection is just limited to the eye. And this has to be really diagnosed clinically. We need support, looking at the patient, seeing different systems when the patient is with us in the clinic to be able to really pinpoint where the infection is originating from. Perfect. I, I think this is very important and I, and I wish Francesco to address another important aspect. Let's say that we have uh, a, what we call phenotype, so how the disease is presenting itself. Let's say you suspect that there is uh, a viral disease in the eye. Is there any way that you want to disclose to our uh, audience uh, on uh, how you can, you know, somehow detect it, even though it's not that clear? How, which kind of techniques we have here in Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi? So it all starts with us examining the patient and looking for uh, phenotypes, as you said, looking for patterns. Some uh, infectious disease, as we're talking about infections, can have a pattern which is recurrent, but some are masquerading as everything, basically. I'm thinking of tuberculosis, of syphilis. You mentioned viral, for example. The way we uh, diagnose viral uveitis is by getting a small sample of the aqueous humor, so the, the fluid that floats in the front of the eye, and looking for a PCR for viruses. So that's the best way to be sure about the diagnosis. So let's say this, and I want to make a you know, comment about what you said that I do believe is very important, is that we are now talking about precision medicine. 
So precision medicine is one of the hot topics here in Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, and we know that we are investing a lot in that. And our team is really committed to try to apply this principle in every single case that we see in our clinic. Now, precision medicine comes along also, you know, with uh, what we do for imaging. And I want to, in to involve both of you because, you know, these two colleagues of mine are the masters for imaging, and I have to disclose that the team is successful for that, and I want them to intervene about this. So tell me, how can we apply precision medicine in imaging? So essentially, precision medicine, like the name suggests, is that not one size fits all. We go by the phenotype of the disease and individualize the treatments for each patient. And we can do it in two ways. Like you said, one is the imaging of the patient where we obtain really very deep cross-sections of different structures, including the retina, the choroid, different parts of the eye, and we understand the pathology at really a very microscopic level. And by obtaining these images, we really know what's the extent of the disease. We have established patterns. I think all of us here in this room, we know exactly which disease can present with which pattern. We recognize that, and that's how we individualize treatment plans for our patient. So imaging essentially is like you know, getting the eye under the slide, but in a living individual. And this really complements the blood tests that we obtain for our patients. So in this way, we can really individualize and give precise treatments to the patient, preventing unwanted side effects. That's, that's fantastic, and um, that's one of the, uh, let's say, high-level expectation that we want to have. So we want to treat patients, but we do not want to harm them. So that's, that's an important aspect. So now I want to involve Francesco on another side, since I know that we're running uh, a lot of uh, research about uh, something that goes above and beyond what we can offer to patients. So tell us about uh, what we do for research in understanding the precision medicine, particularly for OCTA, which is uh, uh, optical coherence tomography and geography. Yes, so we are trying to, Dr. Anirudh uh, mentioned two steps of imaging. The third step of imaging is correlating what is inside the eye with what we are seeing in the pictures of imaging. So uh, getting samples uh, from the front or the back of the eye, looking at how much cytokines, how much TNF there is, so as to uh, personalize the treatment as well. And correlating those findings with the findings that you have on uh, OCT, which is a normal scan of the retina, on fluorescein angiography, which is a dye test that looks at the blood vessels, and on OCTA. What is OCTA? OCTA is a new non-invasive way of looking at blood flow without having to inject anything. So that is the future of the treatment of uveitis. We will be able to personalize a treatment uh, by just analyzing what's inside the eye and looking at phenotypes of uh, imaging. That is fantastic because what we try to do is to find what we call biomarkers that are what is the sign of the uveitis telling whether we have a good outcome or a bad outcome and how the immune system has an interplay between the different components of the eye immune system. Now, talking about this, and thank you for, for addressing this, let's go a little bit more in deep about what we can do for patients, because it's true that we do all these diagnostic tests, but what is at the end what we can do for them? So how we address this for the treatment? Francesco, you want to start first? Well, treatment, we're talking about, in this case, non-infectious uveitis, because if it's an infection, we treat the infection. For non-infectious uveitis, I think we all use a, a step-ladder approach. So we start with cortisone. Um, cortisone, uh, it's an amazing medication that calms down the immune system so that it stops attacking the eye. But it has uh, side effects in the long term, so we need to find alternatives if the uveitis recurs. So the way I explain it to my patient is the same as when you have uh, your uh, laptop or your PC in front of you and everything freezes, so you go under the table and you unplug it and you restart it. So we use uh, medications like uh, uh, biological or non-biological uh, mod uh, modulatory of the immune system to do that, to restart the immune system and reboot it. Now, it's a step ladder with different uh, uh, approaches. Uh, uh, all of us have been trained maybe in different uh, facilities, and we have different ways of treating them. But I think it's, uh, uh, the way it starts is with uh, some medications, such as methotrexate or mycophenolate, that are the first step in this, in this case. So I'm happy that we're starting uh, going through this. Uh, the, I want to summarize and make it easier, which means that 
we use the steroids as an inductor uh, to put under control the immune system that is becoming, you know, naughty to the eye and uh, working against our eye, and we need to protect it. The immune suppressive agents are medications that are used to try to eliminate the use of corticosteroids and minimize the potential side effects. And I'm glad that I have this collaboration with these two colleagues because when I started more than 20 years ago, my tenure in, in ocular immunology, we didn't have practically anything and everything was uh, really unexplored. Exciting from one side, but not easy to manage, you know, in the real life. So Aniruda, just to, just to clarify that, it's true that Francesco said uh, all of us are skilled to give direct prescription for these medications because we, we were trained for that. But let's assume that we have a systemic disease. How our team, the, uh, the UVI service, acts into Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi and how we act uh, for everything that is surrounding us. Like, uh, do we have networking with other hospitals? So I'll just build up on what Francesco said. We work in a tertiary uh, care facility, really, and we have established very good collaborations with other institutes within the hospital and even outside. So for many patients, we do consult uh, very closely and work very closely with rheumatologists, with infectious disease specialists. I've had patients who have had to discuss with pulmonologists, and I've also had multidisciplinary meetings for patients with very complicated diseases. So the, in, in a sense, we are trying to dissect the disease and trying to address all aspects, not just the eye, but to address all aspects of the disease and address each systemic component of the disease. So that's, that's a great answer because it, it, it show a case on how we are creating an ecosystem to try to help those who are not skilled enough. And I strongly encourage everyone that might listen to this podcast to be mindful that you have not to try to treat this disease because the tissue of the eye can have irreparable damages. And it's important to try to run the correct diagnosis to go through the correct treatment. So that's why we act as a team and we do not act as individuals. Sharing the different opinions sometimes can find out the correct answer for a certain disease. Now, what, we do, what do we do, Francesco, for the outreach? How we somehow try to showcase what, what we do here in Clean, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi? Uh, well, I guess we all start with uh, research and publications in international journals. And we present our research also in international meetings, whether they're just uveitis oriented or general ophthalmology meetings, uh, like the American Academy, for example. That's the first uh, thing that we do outside of the country. Inside of the country, we try to collaborate and participate in rheumatology meetings, for example, ophthalmology meetings, of course, and try to create a, a network of people who have our numbers and they can reach out to us to discuss a difficult case or just to refer a patient. Let's point out this. I mean, we have the human touch to reach uh, out our our potential, you know, partners because we need to have also collaborations by other centers to understand what can be done elsewhere but here. And I want to point out an important aspect is that everything that we have done is done at the level of peers. So we try really to reach everyone out and give also the correct answer to help uh, basic ophthalmologists as well as the top ones where we can have a high level conversations. So now, since we are very close to the end of this very nice podcast, and thank you for coming up and allow us to uh, showcase what uh, our team is doing, is there any final remark that you want to do, Francesco? Well, yes. So we want to emphasize that we are a tertiary referral center for uveitis, and we are there for uh, whatever doctor has a difficult case, not just in this hospital, but even outside. So our, I believe most of the rheumatologists and ophthalmologists in this country, they have our WhatsApp and they can always reach out to us if they have a difficult case to discuss. So we are here for them, we are here to help them and we will always refer patients back and collaborate with them. Aniruda? Just you know, to re-emphasize, I think our team is very accessible. Uh, we are very collegial and we like to address all the aspects of the disease. Like I said, I tell my patients that we are the ones who join the dots really. So we, we can help uh, in all aspects. We can get in patients very rapidly if a patient needs urgent help 
and we are also there for follow ups and re back referrals to their primary care physicians so i think uh, we form a great team well i i'm i'm very happy that you mentioned team because to myself team is uh, together everybody achieve more so that is the final statement that i want to do and uh, thank you once again to, for for uh, coming up here and to showcase what we do here in the team of the UVI Center here in Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. And thank you for participating in the Docus Inn. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you.